It's about 18 million specimens. It's one of the leading collections in the world um, for agricultural research. Continues right down almost to the... So orange. from where you're standing, almost, all... Almost to the orange door. All flies. All flies. And Jeff Cumming is a federal entomologist who works at Agriculture Canada's massive insect collection on Carling Avenue. In addition to being part of the team that determines which parasites should be unleashed to combat invasive species of insects from other continents, Cumming has spent a lot of time inside Canadian National Collection of Insects studying pieces of ancient amber embedded with predaceous flies that went extinct millions of years ago. Okay, these are the, uh, the papers that I've published on amber. Mm -hmm. Uh, so insect inclusions in amber, but I specialize on flies. So um, this is a paper I did with David Grimaldi from the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And these, this is very old amber. And there's some pictures you can see. You can see the flies in the amber. A lot of the taxa that you see of these ancient fossils, um, the, some of the groups are extinct. Some of the groups, many of the groups are extinct, but some of the entire families, the whole lineage is extinct. But what they have is they have a combination of features that you don't see in modern insects or other animals. And what, what that does is test your classification system. Cumming has published many papers where he's described and named species of ancient flies, such as the Chimeramyidae berminica. The organism, which hasn't existed on Earth for millions of years, was named after a chimera, a mythical beast composed of different animals. Old specimens um, from the Cretaceous, which is, you know, goes back to 100... The oldest is Lebanese amber. Mm. The oldest amber is, with insect inclusions, is Lebanese, is about 125 million years old. So this is well into the time when the dinosaurs were roaming around the Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cumming agreed to show me Agriculture Canada's yes. amber collection. Anyway, but here we have our cabinet with the amber. So, you know, this is basically some small orders of insects, but the, uh, the amber collection is here. It's all kept in these little boxes. And they all have numbers, and we have a catalog, and they're not organized by the flies or the or the aphids or the small parasitic hymenopter or the parasitic wasps. They're organized by number because each piece can have more than one thing in it. So you have to go to the catalog and get out the particular specimen. Yeah, CA five one zero seven, CA five one zero eight. CA yes, we. Canadian amber specimen is what it means. And this is Canada's largest collection of amber. Yeah. With insect inclusion. With insect inclusion. So, on here it says Diptera and A. That's one of the groups I studied. So if you look in here, there's a tiny piece of amber. So you guys cut it down in order yeah, for optimal? Yeah, so, so we could see the insect inside. Okay, so it stays in there. So... So we put it back. These ones usually mean, with the red, that they've been described. Holotype. That's a very valuable specimen. Cedar Lake, Manitoba was where a lot of this amber was collected. What and, makes it valuable? Um, it's the name of that, the, the type specimen. The holotype. Yeah. Is, uh, it's uh, Cercopidae, which is a hopper. So somebody studied this piece and, um, and named, named the species, described it, and this is the voucher specimen that goes with the name. Because you can have more than one specimen. Um, and here, seeing this is more, all numbered. So 1,240, 1,278, here, okay, well, what happens is that we have a representative of, there are specimen numbers, and the material's probably on loan to other institutions, and here's the documentation, mm. trying to track out, trying to track over the, the uh, 80 years this collection's been mm, around. That piece of paper looks like it's yellow. 
Yeah, it looks pretty old. It looks pretty. Yeah. So we're, just, we're just trying to find that material because it's been borrowed by a scientist and then I returned. So here, if you look, these have been mounted on slides. See, the amber's got a microscope slide and a cover slip over it. Mm -hmm. And it's been stuck to the slide on something called Baltic uh, um, Canadian. Uh, uh, and this one here, what's this? It's a Ceratobagana. And for people that don't know, what's a Ceratobagana? Oh, yeah, they're biting midges. Oh, the other biting. name is noceums. So these, these are small, that's why they've gone on slides. Mm. Noceums are tiny little biting flies. So here we have typical. Jeff pulled out a cylinder of polished amber that was picked through, but no insects were found inside. In this regard, it's somewhat of a waste product, but it might come in handy for future scientific research. Back in Jeff's laboratory, he put a Mesozoic amber inclusion from Kachin State, Myanmar, under a microscope to identify the species. Well, the one wasp I think is a Bethila wasp, which is a real wasp, not a parasitic wasp. And they prey on various insects. One of the most numerous groups in amber are the flies. The flies, amber is a sticky tree resin, and then it gets fossilized. And uh, flies tend to get, they're small and they get stuck in amber. Whereas big beetles and, and other, other animals, lizards and things, occasionally get stuck in amber, but very rarely. So the, it's, it's biased for small size insects, amber. And so the two big groups that you find in amber, you find mites, which are not actually insects. You find aphids and their relatives, and you find flies in large numbers.